Greetings, members, one and all of the Salivation Nation. We're going to talk about the Queen, and we're going to talk about the King in this video. The history of Queen Elizabeth on coins and how King Charles may look. Let's explore! <laughs> This is an important topic because the effigy of the queen um, has been pro profound throughout, um, obviously, the Commonwealth nations and, and with their circulating coinage. But the vast majority of the bullion that's out there um, in terms of uh, the designs have the queen's image. or And they still do have the queen's image and will continue to have the queen's image uh, for the foreseeable future. In other words, at least to the end of this year, but some coins are already minted and will be minted with the Queen's image in 2023. Likely, we won't see Charles on coins until the middle of 2023. Uh, and here is the image of the Queen here, and she's sitting next to uh, the now King. That's King Charles over there, looking dapper or looking down or what have you. He was prince in this photograph because he is with this lady who is old enough to be his mom. In fact, she is his mother or was his mother. But nonetheless, so now that the queen has passed on, I'm going to be referencing a story, a story that was shared with me by um, Eric, our resident bouncer, the very first one here um, on this channel. But nonetheless, a picture of majesty, how official coinage portraits of, queen, of the Queen Elizabeth has changed over her 70-year reign and what the King's first engraving might look like. And this is from the Daily Mail. And the Daily Mail always does a great job with the stories and providing some insight and some uh, you know, perspective with photographs and, uh, and really interesting tidbits of information for news stories. And this is one that I think is quite fascinating. So thanks again to Eric for sharing this with me. We're going to go through this because I think it's pretty neat. Britain will see a new face on coins as King Charles III's images re image replaces that of Mother Queen Elizabeth II. And we're talking about here for the Royal Mint, but also the Royal Canadian Mint will have their own effigy, um, and as will um, the Australian Royal Australian Mint as well as the Perth Mint. And so let's take a look at here the very first definitive portrait in 1953 by Mary Gillick. And look at that. The first definitive coinage portrait of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II by Mary Gillick and released on coins in 1953. There you can see this rendering of it from the Royal Mint. Uh, sculptor and medalist Mary Gillick was one of 17 artists competing with preliminary designs in 1952 for the first coinage portrait of the Queen. Although the Queen's coronation was in 1953, she ascended the throne on the day her father, King George VI, died on February 6, 1952. Gillick designed her portrait from a photograph by Dorothy Wilding, which was given to all 17 artists. The Royal Mint said Gillick was awarded the honor of her design being used after she created a light, beautiful, and fresh portrait of the young monarch, unencumbered by a crown and instead wearing a laurel wreath in the classical style. Let's go back up and look at it again. You can see there the laurel wreath, sort of a classical style there. That is fascinating. No crown. Of course, in this image, you do see a crown. And this is the long neck Lizzie, as it's referred to. Um, yes, indeed. One of the portraits of the Queen taken by photography Dorothy Wilding and provided to artists included, including Mary Gillick, to create a preliminary designs from Her Majesty's first coinage portrait in 1953. And that is a lovely profile of the Queen, I must say. She was a beautiful young lady, for sure. Um, sculptor medalist, here, here she is, Mary Gillick, pictured with her design for the Queen's first coinage portrait, which was released in 1953, the year of Her Majesty's coronation. While designing the portrait, she was guided by the Royal Mint Advisory Committee, which included Prince Philip, who visited Gillick in her studio in Chelsea a number of times. Much was said about the length of the Queen's neck 
in the final portrait, but it was confirmed to be true to Her Majesty. Humphrey Paget, creator of the coinage portrait for George VI, created the runner-up design for Her Majesty and confirmed he had taken measurements of the Queen's neck. He said, oddly enough, the designer is quite right. The Queen has a long neck. The Duke of Edinburgh was also gave a Gillick advice about the Queen's neck, although not about length, but rather its curve, which he disapproved of, the Telegraph reported at the time. Then we had the second definitive portrait, which was released in 1968, and it was by Arnold Matchin R.A. Look at that. Yes, indeed. That may look more familiar to more of us. And it has Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II on coins released first in 1968. Uh, the civilization was due to take place on February the 15th, 1971, at which point coins with other monarchs' faces would no longer be legal tender. Uh, officials thought the new portrait of the queen would help people distinguish new coins from the old. So another portrait was commissioned in 1968. A team from the Royal Academy that included sculptor Arnold Matchin R.A. won the competition to create the portrait. Matchin said he wanted to produce a design with charm and dignity, and yet without sentimentality. He added he hoped to create an illusion of strong relief to attempt to recapture something of the richness and vitality of the earlier coins, which was not seen possible with the limiting techniques of modern mass production. Matchin didn't want to use official photographs given uh, to those competing. Instead, Her Majesty sat for Matchin four times as he sketched her and modeled her portrait in clay. That is quite unique and interesting. Prince Philip was heavily involved again in, in the, with the portrait being created and was not shy to make his opinions known. He, he was said to have objected to the original portrayal of his wife's chin as he wanted it to be stronger and request the mansion to use more clay, which the artist did before taking it off again once the Duke left. And again, there you can see. <clears throat> so that chin is kind of back a little bit. But he ended up removing it after he left. That's pretty interesting. Then we had the third definitive coinage portrait in 1985. And yes, indeed, uh, by Raphael Makloff, FRSA. And this is a, a design that I really first kind of came familiar with. And this is really shows off that crown, by the way, whereas this one kind of has a lesser crown. This one has a, a greater crown there. But it'd be very interesting to see how Charles will have on his image if it will be with a crown or not. In 1985, the RMAC asked British sculptor Raphael Makloff to submit designs for their latest competition for another new coinage portrait of the Queen. Uh, like Machen, uh, Makloff wasn't pleased with the photographs provided to him of the Queen. He later said, by coincidence, I was invited at that time to one of the royal garden parties. Having been introduced to Her Majesty, I remarked to her that I was working from a less than satisfactory photograph. She responded by saying that she would tell Lord Snowden. Makloff's design was chosen regardless, and the Queen allowed him to create her image in two live sittings. He worked in clay and liked working directly from his subject rather than creating sketches and taking measurements. He said, Her Majesty exclaimed that I, look, that I took less time to complete the portrait in front of her eyes than it sometimes took photographs to get the right lighting and take the photographs. After criticism, his effigy looked flatteringly young. The artist said he had intended to sculpt the symbol and not just a photographic image. So yes, indeed, and it does look, she does look very young there, but uh, still a little bit more of a mature look. Then we have the fourth definitive portrait where you can really see her age by Ian Rank Broadly, FRBS. And this is the design that many of us are quite familiar with. And with a lot of the bullion coins out there that was used for quite some time. And most of us have heard of Ian Rank Broadly. It was released in 1998. A little more than a decade after the last portrait, famed sculptor Ian Rank Broadly was invited to take part in the 1996 competition for the next coinage portrait, which was released in 1998. He wanted a portrait that would clearly was clearly recognizable and would be modeled in such a way that it would read well in the low-relief medium of coinage. He added that while he wanted to be respectful to the queen, he did not want to create a portrait that didn't match her age. Age is no respect of persons, royal or otherwise, and although I was aware that my work might attract criticism, I felt that it was essential to the integrity of the project 
for the portrait to be recognizable one and not overly idealized. And actually, I agree with that. And I think most of us would agree that he did a great job preserving her, uh, you know, her charm and grace, but again, showing her age. Now, there was one criticism, especially the high relief versions that the Perth Mint came out with and others where you could see these wrinkles in her neck that one might make akin to gills. And that's partially where some of the term of lizard queen came from the lizard because of those gills i guess is one area where that could have been but nonetheless very interesting of the rank broadly gave three versions of his model to the rmac notes from working his relationship with the rmac show he suggested changing where the coin's inscription started including a smile on her majesty's face he said it was more difficult to introduce a smile because the complex relationship of facial muscles do not allow one to indicate a particular expression without changing the surrounding features and thus in a subtle way changing the whole look of the face eventually after minutely readjusting the many elements i submitted the revised model that was then developed into a trial piece rank broadly said he felt the shallowness of the coin difficult to work with and it took him months to overcome the difficulties of creating an image that remained recognizable after the coin's release in 1998, he said for myself, I hope that in time I may be regarded as having made a valuable contribution to the rich and varied history of the change in this country. When I see my initials beneath the royal effigy of the coins as a record of my achievement, I feel honored. Yes, indeed. Then we had the fifth coinage portrait from 2015 by Jody Clark. And there we can see an image of her with the queen and with the crown. And we can see that Again, like the previous version, the crown is a little bit worse, a little different type of crown there. I'm not sure what that is, but this is the crown from which we are most familiar uh, with the uh, monarchy in the United Kingdom. And this was the last coinage portrait made of the queen as equal matches for lasting the longest in circulation. Jody Clark's version had lasted for 17 years and is likely to have the longest stint since it will take a few years for an artist to be chosen, a new portrait of Charles to be created and minted. In 2015, the RMSC invited uh, designers, including Clark, to anonymously enter a closed competition for new coinage portraits. Clark's version included the monarch wearing the royal diamond diadem crown that she had at her coronation in 1953. Here we can see the progression of all the images throughout uh, the, the period here with the last one there by Jody Clark. Fascinating indeed. And by the way, 17 years pales in comparison to uh, the uh, the one that lasted uh, longer. And, well, I guess it would, I guess it would, Judy Clark's was 17 uh, used for 17 years, um, and uh, the 2015. But Susan Blunt's version of the Queen was started in 2013 or 2003. So that's coming up on 19. That's 19, almost 20 years. Now that design has been used with that, which I think is the longest use of an effigy of any nation. And it also happens to be the most abhorrent. It is the ugliest, in my view, of all of the uh, effigy of the queens. And I love the Royal Canadian Mint. But I cringe every time I see that portrait of Queen Elizabeth uh, by Susan Blunt. It just, to me, it's just, it's too soft of a design, especially considering the, the quaint, quite detail that they use. And they've used it ever since, have not changed it once since 2003. Um, so anyway, I don't know why it says Judy Clark's version been used for 17 years. 2015 to 2022 is not 17 years. I think they got that mixed up. Anyways, uh, the last in-house designer of a monarch's portrait before her was George William de Salles, who created the portrait of Edward VII in 1902. And it was the first to use Judy Clark's First time in more than a century to use in-house royal mint designer was responsible for Monarch's official coinage portrait. Clark said everyone who entered the competition was supplied with the same reference material showing the queen's face facing different uh, ways in numbers of different angles. Also did quite a bit of research online to find more natural, unopposed images of her. I looked at the designs of the previous effigies and wanted to design to work as part of the set as well as working on its own. Then we've got the portrait for the Jubilee in 2022. And uh, we'll go past that because we want to see what the Prince of Wales looked like in his portrait. 
John Bergdahl also created an official commemorative portrait of Her Majesty to mark the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. Uh, and that the Queen famously adored horses, and the portrait is dressed in the uniform of the horse's guards. But this is what we wanted to see here. This is what King Charles could look like on the coins. And this is his 70th birthday piece here uh, from His Royal Highness, the Prince of Wales, on uh, his 70th birthday. And that was issued, I think, in 2018. And this is what it could like, could look like uh, for 2023. They got 2022 here for Australia. Charles III. Yes, indeed. A mock-up of what the new coinage of portrait King Charles could look like without a crown, as you can see there. Uh, but uh, that could possibly be the case. British currency won't be replaced overnight, and the change will take years as new Coins and notes are created with the face of the king, and other coins are gradually removed from circulation. After George VI died, the queen's coins did not appear until 1953, the year after her ascension and the year of her coronation. Likely that will be the case with King Charles as well. The new coins and notes will be designed before the Royal Mint Advisory Committee sends their recommendation for new coins to the Chancellor and obtain royal approval. The final choices will be approved by the Chancellor, and the King. While the Queen's image faces to the right, on uh, the Queen's image faces to the right on the current coins, new ones will show the King facing left, which is this way we can see there to the left. Edward VIII's coin, right, faces left, even though his father George V faced, also did, before himself. Uh, Edward VIII's successor, George VI, faced left, since royal tradition, Edward should have been facing right. And so he went back to tradition. The only time in history where that has been done. So yes, indeed. Uh, as the new set of coins looms, many people are taking the chance to buy commemorative coins from the Royal Mint. And the Royal Mint website has been uh, pretty busy. I've been on there several times and had to wait in line. But nonetheless, uh, this is due to a long tradition dating back to the 17th century to alternate the way the successive monarchs are facing as far as the way they do face. And we saw that with the King Edward VIII who faced the other way. Until British currency was decimalized, decimalized, I guess in 1971, it was common to find multiple monarchs facing both ways and a handful of change. While the royal men has created a portrait of Charles before, in 2018, to mark the then King Prince's 70th birthday, it is likely a new one will be commissioned after he becomes king. So there you have it. So that's what it could look like. Let me know what your thoughts are. Uh, again, important because so many of us uh, own coins and will continue to buy coins of these other nations um, uh, that are the Commonwealth nations. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. Thanks again to Eric for sending this along. I want to encourage you to please rate, share, Comment and subscribe.